Okay, so in this weekly update, we're going to be looking at all of the data because there's a lot of signals going around. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense other than there is a lot of selling going on in stocks. And so while the market has actually gained some ground last week, we're not seeing the buyers that I need to see for me to start beating the bull drum. So let's go ahead and look at some of that data now. All right, so if you recall, a couple of weeks ago, I put a video out saying, when could the market bottom? I'll put a link to it uh, below here, but basically we saw so much selling that it looked like we could potentially bottom on February 11th. So I wanna follow up on that and also go through some of the insights that I saw last week. And so this is our blog post, February 3rd, 2022, shaking out the weak hands. So what does that mean, Luke? Well, when we were on the trading desk, right? When Jason and I were trading and we would see sellers come in on certain days, we had to ask ourselves, are these the strong hands or the weak hands? So strong hands are long-term investors, right? You wanna think of like Warren Buffett. He's buying stocks, he's holding them for years. He's not worried about the day-to-day -day volatility. However, there were investors out there that don't have conviction, right? They see the slightest bit of volatility and they get out. That is what we're calling weak hands. And that is what I believe is happening right now as the market starts to find its bottom. So let's go ahead and look at some of that data. So while I'm not fully convinced that we're ready to just rage higher, and the reason for that is because the big money index, while the market is going up, it is not rallying, okay? So for me to get uber bullish, and I'm always bullish, by the way, we really need to see the data start to support that buyers are stepping in. So the big money index isn't showing that. Maybe it will tomorrow, but right now it is not. We go under the hood, right? Normally I show you guys the portal, automated, all that. We're just gonna look at an image here, but you can see that based on our data, the reason the market rallied, and that is a big rally, it's not because buyers stepped in, it is because selling vanished. Now, what's important for me to get uber bullish is I need to see two things happen. One, I need to see selling vanish, and then I also need to see buyers start to step in. So where have the big pain points for the market been? They have been in technology and growth areas. So technology stocks, a lot of them that I own, they're all down big. It's because we've seen some of the most selling literally since the pandemic lows. But what can you see? Even though tech has rallied, selling is slow. We haven't seen any buys, right? Maybe that'll change soon. And I hope it does because that would be very bullish. Healthcare, right? People are worried about rates rising. Okay, so healthcare companies, a lot of them carry a lot of debt. That makes running their business more expensive. Lots of selling, it all vanished. We need to see buyers start to step in here. Hopefully they do soon, we're not seeing it yet. And then lastly, everybody's so worried about high energy prices and no one's gonna spend money for discretionary things like you know, household products, clothes, you name it, games. Selling did slow, but we have not seen any buyers step in. So until I see buyers step in, I'm not uber bullish, but I am looking to buy quality stocks on discounts. Always, always, always. Okay, so at this point, we're seeing a lot of selling slowing, right? That's the reason why the market is starting to rally. We haven't seen the buyers yet but I think that we have some very good things to look forward to. And so now I want to look back at a prior time when we saw extreme selling before, and then what we can expect coming out of this current sell-off. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, if you like data, you are going to hopefully love this. Let's see if I can explain this. Okay, so I wanted to look at how outlier stocks performed, right? Based in our data, these are some of the best stocks out there. How did they perform going into the pandemic, right? We know that that was nasty. How did they perform coming out of the pandemic? And then more importantly, what can we expect going forward? So basically what I did is I looked at all of the top stocks that we saw in our data in the second half of 2019, and I built a portfolio of those names. 
hypothetically. And then I said, okay, let's pretend we bought all of those names, those 20 stocks, January 1st, 2020. And then let's see how that portfolio did. And also I wanted to see not only just the best stocks, but what about the worst stocks? Not the ones that were getting bought. What about the ones that were getting sold? I want to just do comparative analysis. All right. So going into the pandemic, that good portfolio, right? Outliers, that's this blue line. Okay. The S and P that's this dark blue line. And then the stocks that got sold, the lower quality names, that's the red line. So going into the pandemic, we circled right here, everything fell, but notice the low quality names, they fell like rocks. Okay. You can see that performance right over here. Okay. So nothing was spared, but then as we came out of the pandemic, you start to see outlier stocks, right? The ones that we like, those are the ones that started to outperform everything in a big way. Now, obviously the S and P did really well, but look at the underperformance of these low quality stocks. Okay. And this is why we focus so much on quality because if it's not quality, it's probably going to underperform. So you'd see drastic outperformance, drastic outperformance. And then of course, right now we have been seeing nasty, nasty selling across the board, especially in outlier stocks, right? You can see pain. So I wanted to remind people that I know it's painful and I know stocks are down, but we have seen this and I believe eventually the selling is going to dissipate and then we are going to see a bounce in high quality names. All right, then finally, I just want to remind everybody of that study that I did a couple of weeks ago, looking for when the market could potentially bottom. We did that study because remember, it was a lot of selling in our data. And in fact, it was so much selling that based on history, when you see that kind of selling, it usually takes about 14 trading days or three calendar weeks for us to hit a trough. Okay. So that put it right around February 11th, which is in a couple of days. Oh my God. But here is why I wasn't that bearish. Why? Right? It's because after you see this level of selling on average, the S and P is up positive on a one week, two week, one month, three month and one year basis, right? So regardless if the market is going to trough on February 11th or not, it doesn't matter. The data says it's a bullish time to be buying stocks. Okay. And you can see in general, it's a winning time to be looking for stocks. We'll see what happens in the future. But as a reminder, and I want to just keep stressing this is when you get so bearish, if you miss the low, because eventually the market is going to rebound, hopefully it'll happen whenever the data starts to show buyers. We haven't seen it yet, but you can miss out on incredible gains if you're not invested. And that is the risk. Okay. So the bottom line is based on what the data is showing right now, we just need buyers to step in. So I think that we are kind of near the tail end, hopefully of shaking out the weak hands. Now look, don't be weak hands, right? Because a rally can start whenever you least expect it. And I believe our data will show us whenever that is coming. But regardless, if you look historically, when you see sell-offs of this magnitude that we're all experiencing, it tends to be bullish. So you want to be looking for quality stocks, which is what we try to do. So you guys hang in there. Remember, always think long-term use data. Let it help you with your investing process. If you like this content, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll see you next time.